with chapter five deal with what? Chapter five deal with the mixing of chemical, mixing of uh, two metals, right? So the it will be. So before that, uh, your test one, your test one will be LO1 and LO2. Uh, we'll go into chapter, we'll go into test one when we finish mechanical properties. Then we do test one. Then uh, test two will be LO3 phase diagram and uh, polymer, ceramic and composite. Your final will be this four, uh, five question. Uh, the final, uh, then the question four, five, choose either one. Ah. Hmm? That's one. I will choose one of the lecture session. Two hours. Uh, after we finish the mechanical properties. It will be after week seven. Okay. So uh, today we focus on chapter five. Uh, diffusion. Diffusion is a uh, mixing between two uh, elements. So we will look at solids, huh? so, solid phase. So again, what is diffusion? Diffusion, the keyword here is a transfer of mass, huh? the transfer of mass. Uh, and it's very important when we talk about treatment of material, right? So, um, by the end of this module, you should be able to answer question like how you strengthen the material. One of the one of the uh, method is through diffusion. So diffusion. So as you can see on the screen here, is a illustration of how diffusion in liquid can form. However, in chapter five, we talk about solid. So if you drop a dye in diagram number one into a solution of water, the dye molecule will spread. It will take some time to spread until equally mixed into the solution. The equally mixed solution or the state we call it equivalent state. So we will use this uh, principle in explaining solid diffusion. Right? Okay, so yeah, so diffusion is a phenomenon where material transport by atomic motion. This is by solid. Huh? So this one diffusion is a phenomenon where the material transport by atomic motion. Okay. So we can demonstrate this uh, phenomenon by using diffusion couple, right? by diffusion couple. Couple means two body, two solid. Uh, we we demonstrate by giving you copper and nickel. If you put two copper and metals, solid metals together. So before high temperature uh, at room temperature, in schematic presentation, you will have red dot to represent copper blue dot to represent nickel. So at room temperature or at solid states, the atom will not move into each other. They will just touching surface each other, right? So this is diffusion before, be, this is before diffusion happen, right? So you, 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 you have two solid metals contact each other. Then you can draw schematic uh, presentation uh, for diffusion, uh, stage huh, before diffusion happened. And on the graph here, on the graph here, y-axis is concentration, x-axis is the position from reference zero until the end. So if you mix two metals, the one on the left, you see there's a copper, copper until copper boundaries and then continue with nickel, boundaries, and then the concentration will start from 100% concentration, drop to zero at the boundaries of two metals. 
same with the nickel. So this is a concentration graph. Uh, you see there's a drop, steep drop at the boundaries of two metals. Then we start to heat up the material. We join them together at room temperature. We start to heat up the material. Copper will go into nickel. Nickel will go into copper. The red dot will shift into, will exchange position with the blue dot. If you give, increase the temperature. Temperature also means something. Temperature, it means energy. You give the material energy to transfer the mass, huh? to go into a certain uh, position. So, what uh, can you predict if you increase temperature, what happened to this diagram, this diagram, and this diagram? Can you predict? We talk about diffusion motion. There's a mixture of color. The red dot will go inside here, blue dot will go inside here. If you mix the two material, it will become like this. So there will be a region of mixing between copper and nickel. When there's a mixing of two alloy or two metals, pure metal, we call it alloy. Right? When there's a mixing of two metals, we call it alloy. So in the middle section here, it will become an additional level, uh, layer. We call it diffusion layer. Or uh, in this case, you're seeing copper nickel alloy. So the diffusion of copper will move to the left. Diffusion of nickel alloy will move to the right, uh, left. Right? Copper will move to the right. Blue color one will move to the left. What happened to the schematic presentation? Right? So there is a mixing of red dot and blue dot at the center and not at the end of the uh, element because it needs more energy to reach a certain length. Okay, so this is the diffusion region, huh? the diffusion region, and the concentration versus position graph will also change. The 100% copper will drop as the diffusion happens, it will start to dilute and become zero. Before a room temperature, you see there's a steep drop, but if you increase the temperature at the um, at the meeting point between two elements, there's a drop of uh, concentration from copper and between copper and nickel. But if you add a point, red point and blue point at a certain look position, you still get 100% concentration. Okay? You add these two points, add these two points, add these two points, at this point, you also get 100%. Uh, in, this, in this point, maybe 50% copper, 50% nickel, but add two together, you still get 100% concentration. Okay. By looking at this graph, previously in chapter four, it's a, there's a calculation to calculate concentration. Right? You, you are given uh, a certain mole of that element. Between two elements, you can calculate how many percent of that one when they mix. Okay. So, The process where atom of one metal diffuse into one another, they call it interdiffusion. For example, the one you see on the screen, they interchange the position. In chemical, in material science, we call it interdiffusion, it exchange position. Right? Or in this case, sometimes they call impurity diffusion. So, what I mean by impurity diffusion means Originally, in blue region, there's no blue dot, but there's an alien atom or impurity go inside the blue region. Okay. Uh, 
the second the second line means the graph lah. There's a drop of concentration when the diffusion start to happen. This one is inter diffusion. What happened when it happened in the pure metal? In a pure element, it can be happen inside itself. For example, it can be either mechanism number one, A diagram on the left or B diagram on the right. Diagram A all is the same element, but you can switch position between itself. The atom of itself switch position. This is called diffusion also, but uh, we define this one as self diffusion. Okay, because it's, it's have its own only. It do not have inter diffusion. There's no other other material. Okay, same with this one. So when there's a additional atom of its own self, it can be replaced in this location and this one can peel off and go into other location. This is called also called self-diffusion. It's like ma magic, uh, they call the magical chair lah, that you, you open music and then you go and run and sit on the chair, that kind of game, same, same, uh, same idea. So there are two types of diffusion, inter-diffusion and self-diffusion. Next, we go into calculation already. Just now, uh, previous two slides, we mentioned we increase the temperature. In other words, when we increase temperature, means we give energy to the element. So on the graph here, you see vertically is energy, uh, horizontal axis is reaction coordinate. You have three, uh, three stage. When it becomes stable, at the stable stage, we call it reactant. For example, copper, before you increase temperature, they call it reactant. Nickel also same. Before you, you, you be, before it, it charged into each other region, we call it re reactant. Then you increase temperature. Increase temperature means you give it energy to charge into empty region or exchange position. Then this spike of energy or E star is called activation energy. The change of energy is called activation energy, delta E star. There will be, you give energy, then the, the, the element or atom will absorb energy and then it start to shake, shake to vibrate, and then it will jump into uh, each other space. There will be an optimum energy. It, there will be optimum energy needed. If you give more, uh, it will also drop a little bit because it, it already reached at a certain uh, distance. He want to book the, 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 the space there. So after it reach the maximum, it will drop and then become reactant again. Means that it give energy, it move to a new space. When you're moving, the energy will drop a little bit. On If you on the graph, uh, this one, uh, reactant, it go up. Uh, ER go up to E star. You start to receive energy. The molecule will start to moving. Once it going to reach the position he want to reach, he no longer he want to become stable already. So become stable, you need to give energy already. So give energy, the energy will drop. Then it sit stationary in the position you need. It become back reactant. Okay. Then sometimes you do mixing it will further give energy to become a product. A product means the end result of mixing between two. So for example, just now the copper and nickel at the center diffusion region there, there will be a, a phrase where it becomes stabilized and two chemical mix, it become products. Okay. So the rest you read. There is a stage called unreacted. There's a call, there's a state called reacted. Huh? Okay, so this is unreacted. Then you give energy, it reacted. Then you go down. Okay. So it depends on the energy given, huh? Given. 
I enlarge the thing. So this is just a, a, a further explanation of what I mentioned just now. Okay. The reaction is exothermic, which means it gives energy when you when you uh, uh, when it become uh, when it becomes stable after you reach a certain stage. We need to uh, have this uh, understanding that only a fraction of molecules will have a sufficient energy to reach the energy level. Only a fraction because uh, not all, uh, not all. Uh, because the energy also needs some contact surface and then slowly transfer the energy. So not, not the whole element spontaneously becomes something. Uh. So Boseman is a scientist of immaterial. So it studied the effect of temperature with the increasing uh, energy of a gas molecule. So it gives you, uh, it, it found out there's a trend, yeah? there's a trend. Probability of that element linearly increase with the E exponential of energy E star minus E divided by K over T. So Boltzmann constant that you see previously in previous class, Boltzmann constant have two value. In this case, is in Joule atom Kelvin. There's another one is EV over atom Kelvin. Eh? So it depends on the parameter that you have. Okay, so probability will, 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 const, will constantly uh, linearly increase with E exponential of your energy. Uh, minus E divided by KT. Huh? So later we'll see this equation. Okay. Uh, then we modify a little bit, means you through experiment data, then you come up with the relationship between the parameter. So it, at the end, it gives you n divided, divided by capital N total. Small n is the number of atoms with an energy greater than E star, which means reactant more than uh, this one, the energy greater than E star. N total is the total number of atom molecule in the system. So when you talk about number of atom, you know that we are talking about mole, a certain mole of molecule. When you start talk about mole, uh, you need to start to link with the number of uh, Avogadro. So here, Boltzmann constant here, you see this second set of uh, Boltzmann's, Boltzmann constant. This one is in EV over Kelvin. Just now, the one that you see is in Zo over atom. This one is in EV over Kelvin. Right, temperature in Kelvin, C is the constant. C is the constant. Eh? So how do we um, transfer the knowledge that we learn? We can calculate the number of vacancy at equilibrium, means the, the, the space of the diffusion, number of vacancy at that particular temperature in metallic crystal, we can calculate using this formula. Again, this formula is important. Bowman's content will not be given, so memorize that one. Huh? But sometimes it will be given, most of the time it won't, it won't be given. So Boltzmann constant 8.62, 10 power negative 5 EV. This is time, eh? times 10 power negative 5 EV over Kelvin. So um, yeah, other parameter is what you see on the screen. Uh, so this is just a, Comparison between number of vacancies and uh, um, 
the equation just now. Huh? So what are the differences between these two? So you can write in the, uh, just be careful on the equation of the one on the bottom and the center. Huh? On the center, you're calculating the number of vacancy. So we apply the equation. First, it's asked you to calculate equivalent number of vacancy per cubic meter. In pure copper, copper is Cu. Huh? At temperature 500 degrees C, when you use the formula later, convert C to Kelvin plus 273. Huh? The or once you find the equivalent number, then you find the vacancy factor at 500 C in pure copper. Assume energy formation EV is given. Formation, energy formation is given 0 0.9 EV. So here you uh, you are given the Boltzmann constant k equal to eight point something. Assume your constant value c equal to one. Okay. So uh, sometimes in your test or test two or final exam, um, if the c constant was not given in your solution, you can write assume c equal to one. If the question do not mention value of c, you assume c equal to one. So first, you calculate the equivalent number of vacancy. You use NV divided by N equal to CE power minus EV divided by KT. Is just a substitution of number? You pull the N to the right hand side. It become linear equation. So you need to find the N. The N, you use this equation that you've seen in the previous uh, chapter. N is NO rho divided by atomic mass of uh, copper. Atomic mass of copper, you refer to periodic table. Okay, rho uh, density of the copper is 8.96 megagram over meter cube. Uh, this tutorial question do not give you the role, uh, but normally uh, we will give you uh, in the question. Uh, this question, uh, this question, tutorial question do not mention the density it because it's a continuous of the previous chapter. So you assume you already know the density of uh, copper. So you substitute the value. And uh, O is one more of uh, that particular element, one mole is 6.02 10 power 23 atom. This is Avogadro number. Multiply by density of copper. In this one is megagram. You need to change the mega into gram. Why change the gram? Because your atomic mass is in gram. Okay, the, the unit must be equivalent. Huh? So here we deal with uh, gram because your atomic number in the periodic table is in gram. So once you do the uh, calculation, you find the N. Number of N is 8.49 something. 10 power to the 8 atom over meter cube. So inside the 1 meter cube of uh, copper, you have so many atoms there. Once you find your N, you substitute. Lah. You have your N value. C is 1. E exponential. EV was given 0 0.9. K is the Boltzmann constant. T temperature 500, you change to Kelvin. So you have all the value here. You press calculator, you will get 1.6 10 power 23 vacancy of one meter. Okay. Ah, yeah, uh, yeah, 0.9. It's given in the question. 
Mm. Right. So this is how you find. Uh, this is how you find. Um, uh, just show you the application of the equation and very direct. Uh, very direct. Uh, there's no uh, complex thing here. So the B one, once you find the first one, you continue with the B, it asks you to find the vacancy fraction. Vacancy fraction actually is the ratio. It's the ratio at 500 C of a pure uh, copper. So the vacancy fraction is actually you take the vacancy divided by the number of N, uh, number of N, so EV, you, cal uh, you calculated 1.6, uh, EV, yeah, yeah 1.6 just now, EV you calculated in section A. So N is uh, 8 point something, atoms meter cube. Okay. Uh, so you take the ratio, take the ratio. EV over N equal to CE minus EV divided by KT. You substitute, you get 1.73, 10 power negative 6. Right? Okay. Basically, we are still recycling the equation. NV equal to N equal to CE uh, exponential minus EV divided by KT. The equation here involved is the calculating the n, is a number of atoms in that particular mole of uh, meter cube of uh, uh, element. Okay. Okay. So this is the first equation for today. To find vacancy and the ratio uh, of uh, vacancy fraction. Okay. Vacancy fraction do not have uh, unit. Eh? Take note. Eh? Vacancy ratio do not have unit. Now we go into rate of process already. When you mix something, you want to quantify. What is the speed of mixing between two elements? So there's one scientist called uh, uh, Ahernis. He gives a one equation. He gives you the rate of reaction given you by C exponential minus Q over RT. Rate of reaction or equal C exponential Q divided by RT. This one, when you learn about thermodynamics, you will see similar uh, form of equation. Just now, the Boltzmann relationship is this one. NV divided by N. Boltzmann relationship gives you the uh, vacancy fraction equal to minus E exponential minus EV over KT. You compare both equation. The differences is minus Q over R, E, V over K, and T. Right? So all these are, are the parameter. Q is the activation energy or the E star. Right? So R is the molar gas. You know molar gas. R is a constant value, 8.3 Joule over mole Kelvin. 1.987, this one is calorie. You know, energy also can be calorie, right? So it depends on the, the value or data that you have. If the data give you in Joe, then you use the first one, 8.3 Joe over something. If you're given calorie, then you use the R value, 1.9 calorie over something. Okay, it depends on the parameter that you have. Temperature always in Kelvin for this module. Uh, R is a constant value. 
um, normally we assume as one. For convenience, uh, for convenience, we assume at one. So in in the experiment, maybe the C can be more than one. Okay. Um, so for solid and liquid, one assumption that we hear is that we're dealing with every time we deal with one mole of uh, element. So one mole always have six, ten power to the three atoms or molecule. The Q that we're dealing here is always deal with one mole of something because you look at the r here the r value is in mole okay so again uh, this one are uh, a uh, henry's a uh, uh, rate equation this one you determine using experimental data okay so if you rewrite the equation in log means you want to remove the exponential. E, we have a lock uh, on both sides. Then we can pull this one to the front. Then we have ln rate equal to ln C minus Q divided by R. You know ln, ln, ln E is equal to one, right? You know, ln E equal to one. So, uh, so you have the Q over RT. The, actually, there's a one here, but uh, we just simplify, take out the one. Okay. So we have a ln equation, ln rate equal to ln C minus Q over RT. So if you plot, the rate versus uh, the C, which is the rate, uh, the, the temperature. So this is in the Y equal to MX plus C. Right? If you plot the, the, the can you plot in the temperature if you want, right? So it's uh, in the MX plus C. Long, long C is a bead intersection on your graph. And you have the, Gradient of the graph. Right. So you, you plot rate versus 1 over t. You get y axis is rate. Uh, ron rate, your x axis is 1 over t. Then you get y equal to ms plus c. You see the form, right? The form equation. Make sense to you? Make sense? Yeah. Okay. So just now it's in long, you can put in lock also. Just now it's in long, huh? You can put in long, but you can put in lock also, lock 10. When you put in lock 10, there's a constant value below the fraction Q here. Become lock 10 rate equal to lock 10 C base 10. And here, you get minus Q divided by 2.33 RT. It's a conversion between uh, exponential equation into log 10. Right, but you, at the end, you get one constant, 2.1 over uh, 2.303. 2 right, but we're not going to prove this 2.303. We just use the value. Okay. So we have two. Lah. Two way of calculating. One is use lon. One is use lock. So in the slides later, when I show you, if you see the solution is one over two point three something, it means I'm using log ten calculation. If you're seeing round number, it means the solution is using long approach. There are two, lah. There are two way of solving. You still get the same answer. Uh, okay. So this is the graph that we expected from the experiment. On the left is the rate. On the x-axis is one over t in Kelvin. 
So then we'll get a linear pattern. So here, if you see the slope is minus here, minus Q over 2.2, uh, 2.3 R, this one is using log 10, log 10 rate, uh, log 10. Then you get slope is minus Q over 2.3 R. If you are seeing the slope is minus Q over R, then your Y axis will be in long. X axis will be in uh, 1 over T. Make sense, huh? So uh, this is a uh, uh, mathematics uh, approach, uh, okay? Um, okay. So we have done with the calculation on the rate. What else, huh? So we have done with the rate. Now we look into atomic diffusion. How atomic diffusion can happen, huh? So a few more slides, then we go for a short break. So diffusion in in, in, uh, in solids, uh, so you can see uh, it will change phrase, solid, liquid, and gas. Okay, solid, liquid, and gas. Um, the rest you read. So you know that solid is very, very difficult to do diffusion compared to gas. Because gas have a lot of space to move in, right? Uh, so when you want to do diffusion or do alloying, you need very, very high temperature. So to make diffusion in, in, in solid to happen, or any diffusion in any phrase, but here we're more interested in solid, you need two factors. One, you have an empty car park for you, empty space for you to do, or or N, uh, yeah, you need these two. Uh. You need empty space and energy to do the diffusion. Okay. So there are two diffusion mechanisms. As you can see previously, we talked about defect. There are instantial and vacancy. A hole, uh, not hole, a space, empty space, or additional atom there. Uh. So there are two diffusion so you can see on the diagram here. So vacancy substitution diffusion mechanism means uh, the motion of a host, it will move in, the, 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 the object here will move into vacancy. This is substitution, a uh, vacancy uh, diffusion or substitutional mechanism means it's replaced. But you're still seeing vacancy there. It's just that when you, when this atom move to here, you actually seeing the whole shift opposite the direction of the, uh, the diffusion. I repeat one more time. Everyone you see on the screen here, the vacancy is at the bottom, right? But when the green ball moved into the vacancy, the, en the empty space seems to have jumped to opposite direction of your diffusion. Makes sense. Uh, okay, so uh, later we will go into more complex case, but this is the uh, vacancy and um, the mechanism. Huh? Okay, then there are some uh, explanation on how this uh, was doing. So this one you read. Huh? So you need some energy. You can see here if this is a space. Atom A want to move into position 1 to position 2. So this is the energy versus position graph. You need energy to push this atom into the vacancy. So the energy will increase. This is called activation energy. The difference of energy, delta E in the graph, is the activation energy. To move from position 1 to position 2. The rest you read, it's just an explanation of what I mentioned just now. So this is an important graph. When it gives you the metals, melting point, crystal structure, temperature range, and activation energy. 
Where, where does this activation energy will help you on the graph? You see just now the rate of diffusion. You see the Q. This value is important when you want to find the rate. This table, the activation energy is important. And there's two columns in the activation energy. On the left is kilojoule over mole. You need to use the correct uh, Boltzmann constant. Eh? If you use Boltzmann constant in joule, you use this one. If you use Boltzmann constant in calorie, you then you use this one. The K, the 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 Boltzmann constant in your calculation. Huh? Okay. Then again, uh, don't forget to go and memorize three type of element for BCC, three type of element for FCC, three type of element for HCP. Okay. The rest is, uh, if you refer, compare melting point and the uh, activation energy, actually they are in linear form. If you increase the melting point, the activation energy also increase. The rest you read, huh? The rest you read. And just uh, uh, enlarge the, the picture that you've seen just now. So if they already have a vacancy, then the energy you need is less because there's no resistance for it to fill in the space. Okay. So this is the the uh, uh, an effect called a uh, cardendro uh, effect. So they how they conduct this experiment, they have metal A and metal B, and then um, they, uh, this is the wires they have. Um, so when the metal A and metal B, if, uh, uh, let me see, uh, the, you will see the shifting of uh, diffusion happen when there is a, uh, uh, when there is a, a density in the vacancy is happen. Uh, um, this one you read, huh? Okay. okay, so this is a silver nanotubes. So you can see um, how the nanotube become hollow uh, using the Nucleation, glove, and uh, voids in the nanotubes. So this is uh, how they observe uh, how the, the 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 vacancy or the space formation. Uh. They they speed up the things. And then there's a diffusion happen uh, between the uh, the gold and silver. So there's an exchange of um, atoms between that region. So that, that is what we want you to observe. Lah. Actually, there's a spreading of uh, molecule. Huh? Insertation, again, insertation is your replacement of uh, additional alien atoms, but usually insertation, they are smaller molecule radius compared to the host. Huh? So here, you can see the position can be changed uh, according to the small molecule there, or small atom there. The rest you read. Uh, this is called interstitial diffusion, right? Okay.
So this also, it just tell you the results, huh? what happened when you have an interstitial diffusion. So you will see that all the alien atoms or, um, yeah, what uh, we call, uh, uh, there's a small blue dot there, the foreign molecule or atoms will fill in the gap there. Huh? This is important when you do metal strengthening later, huh? when you talk, talk about metal strengthening. Okay, we have a short break here. A short break. Uh, okay, we continue three o'clock.